So, how does photosynthesis work? Well, the first thing that happens is that light comes in and it hits a chlorophyll molecule. Um, but it comes in and hits a chlorophyll molecule in what we call the light harvesting complexes. So these are big protein complexes around the outside of the photosystem that are packed full of accessory chlorophyll molecules. So this is a mixture of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And those chlorophylls are there just for light capture. They don't do any chemistry. Because what happens is the light comes in and uh, hits one of these outside chlorophylls, but then there's a process of what we call resonance energy transfer, whereby the energy from that light is transferred between the chlorophylls in the light harvesting complex before it then reaches the special pair. So this is the transfer of energy uh, in the light harvesting complexes. It's not the movement of electrons. So eventually the energy gets passed to this reaction center chlorophyll. So this is chlorophyll A at the heart of the reaction center. And these are referred to as the special pair. And what's special about them is these are the only chlorophylls that can separate in electrons. They've got so much energy that they're actually able to generate a high energy electron. So an electron physically splits off from the chlorophyll molecules. It then passes between a number of other molecules inside the reaction center before it reaches an electron carrier called plastoquinone. However, before we think about what happens to the electrons with plastoquinone, what we need to realise is that this uh, P680 now is missing an electron, and it's really, really reactive. That's a really unstable place for it to be. It desperately needs to split off and, uh, to get another electron, and it doesn't really care where it gets it from. Um, so it gets it from what's really quite an unlikely source, actually, uh, is water. So this is where water comes in. So because that P680 at the moment is so reactive, it's able to take electrons uh, from the water, uh, and as a result, that water splits um, into uh, half an oxygen molecule uh, and uh, two protons. Okay, so we've now got oxygen protons rather than water, and in fact, there's two electrons have gone into the system to, uh, to replace it. So now uh, we're nice and happy. So now the P680 is uh, sort of goes back to its ground state, it's now uh, not so reactive. So, next thing to happen is uh, thinking about back to going back to our electrons with plastoquinone. So so plastoquinone is actually what we refer to as a hydrogen carrier. So it can accept electrons, but only if it also accepts protons, uh, so H+, plus, uh, which it does so from the stromal side of the membrane. And when it's got uh, those, it can then diffuse away so it can actually physically move uh, within the membrane and it can take those electrons and the protons somewhere else. So it then moves to another protein complex called the cytochrome B6F complex. Now, when it gets there, it can give the electrons to that protein complex and it can deposit the protons on uh, the other side of the membrane. This cytochrome B6F complex, um, it undergoes a series of complicated biochemical events that you don't need to worry about. But one thing you do need to know is that as a result of those events, it also pumps protons across the membrane. So it also acts as a proton pump. But as a result of that, um, and the process that it does, it then passes the electrons to another electron carrier called plastocyanin. So plastocyanin is a small protein on the luminal side of the membrane. And plastocyanin can also move. Um, so, and it's able to move without accepting any protons. So plastoquinone needed the protons um, at this stage, but plastocyanin can just accept electrons. It doesn't need protons. So it's able to physically move uh, along the membrane um, to reach photosystem one. Um, so uh, at which point um, it's ready for the next photochemical event. Because, of course, at photosystem one, what's going to happen is, again, we're going to have light. Again, it hits the light harvesting complexes. And again, we get this resonance energy transfer process. And again, uh, the reaction centre, which we call P700 in photosystem 1, again, that can accept uh, or can uh, produce a high-energy electron. It can split off the electron again. And those electrons can then go to a series of carriers, including ferrodoxin at the top here. And just like in uh, photosystem 2, the water replaced the electrons at the chlorophyll. Well, here, we're now in a nice position because this plastocyanin here is able to then give the electrons uh, to uh, P700. So again, we uh, get rid of this high-energy intermediate. So within photosystem 1, the electrons have transferred to these internal things, and they're now at an iron-containing protein called ferrodoxin. 
And ferrodoxin uh, catali uh, is able to pass its electrons to another molecule. So the molecules that we are involved here, uh, we have NADP+, plus, okay, um, which reacts with a proton catalyzed by FNR. So it takes electrons from the ferrodoxin. Those electrons go in to make the molecule NADPH. And NADPH... Um, is a reducing agent that's going to be needed for the Calvin cycle. So uh, we've now made NADPH on, the, on this side of the membrane. So if we think about the system uh, as a whole, uh, we've got... Uh, various different things going on, uh, but we've split the water uh, at the bottom here. So there was one of our original, um, there's one of our original uh, rea uh, reagents that we need. Okay, we've generated this intermediate NADH, oh, sorry NADPH, but what we've also done is to generate a proton gradient. So if you look at this scheme, there are four places uh, where we get a proton gradient uh, forming. Okay. So the first place was when we split the water, we had some protons that were generated there. Okay. Then the second place was plastoquinone took some protons from the stromal side of the membrane to the luminal side of the membrane. So that generated a bigger proton gradient. Then the cytochrome B6F complex moved protons through. So that's our third point. And then finally, this reaction over here with the NADP+, those protons there were consumed on the stromal side of the membrane. So overall, we've contributed to having a high proton concentration on the luminal side and a low proton concentration on the stromal side. And that proton gradient is used to then go to make ATP in an ATP synthase. So as a result of this process, uh, we've split water, we've generated a proton gradient, which can then be used to make ATP, and we've made NADPH. And remember, the ATP and the NADPH are needed in the Calvin cycle, so we're now ready uh, to go and do the carbon fixation reactions.